Hello, hello. So today we're going to do a how to and I'm just going to walk you through how to take your repeating pattern design from Adobe Illustrator and put it onto Spoonflower. The example I'm going to use is one that I'm uploading for a design challenge and in a follow-up episode I am going to show you how to enter a Spoonflower design challenge. If you are new to this channel, I'm Aurora B. On this channel, I share my journey as an artist, turning my passion into a career. I talk about what's worked for me, what hasn't, and I also talk about the often taboo subject of making money from your art. So here we go. So we're gonna start out with just open Illustrator and find the file you want to open. Mine is in a recent file, so it showed up right away and then we click it and as you can see uh, on this file i have some different versions of the same pattern i was trying some different colorways and putting some different textures in just to compare and contrast what i wanted to use so i don't know if you could see but i actually used the brush tool and just wrote this one on top of the pattern that i wanted to use just to make sure that I would remember which one I had decided to enter in the challenge. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to pull out my last pattern, which I think is the one that I want to enter into the challenge. And then I'm just going to place that up just to make sure that that is the same colorway, the same size, and then put it back down. Now you're going to need to ungroup. The pattern it's going to be grouped when you pull it out so you're going to have to go up and on group all right and so now all of the elements are ungrouped the next thing you want to do is go and select the background now on a pattern like this you can tell there's some texture it can sometimes get a little tricky another thing you can do is you can go over to the layers tab uh, and go to the very bottom and find the background. But here I'm just going to zoom in and eyeball it and go in and select the background. Now, after you've selected it, it should give you a little blue highlight. Once you have that blue highlight, then you know you have the background selected. And you're going to, at least on a Mac, mm -hmm. press Command C. That's going to make a copy of that background and then command B, which is going to put it to the back. Now I have a shortcut set up that I can then press command nine, which will then convert it automatically into an artboard. So I just do command C, command B, command nine. But assuming you don't have that shortcut set up, what you're going to do is you're going to press command C, command B, and with that, Still highlighted you haven't moved off it is you're going to go up to object and then you are going to go down to artboard and then press convert to artboard so now when you go over to your artboard panel you're going to be able to see that you have at least two artboards and what I like to do is I like to delete the other one so that I just have the artboard left that I'm going to be working with. Okay, so now you're going to go back and you're going to click the background again and then press S, not Command S, just S. And you're going to bring it out a bit, the background, just to make sure that there aren't any fine white lines, there's not a line, little tiny gap when you export. So now we have everything ready to export on the artboard. And so you're going to go up to the file tab. I'm sorry, my recording software cut off the very top. It's the file tab that you go to, and then we're going to pull down from the file tab and go to export. And then we want export as. So that's going to open a little box and you can choose a name. I'm just calling it camping pattern. Make sure to click use artboards. You can use PNG, but I am going to use a JPEG. All right. So you have that. Make sure you have the folder you want to select and then press export. Okay. Now for Spoonflower, it's very important you go to RGB. 
not C Y M K. And then Spoonflower recommends you use 150. I actually sometimes like to just save my files in 300 to use later in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you how to deal with a 300 PPI file in Spoonflower, but you can also just use 150. You want to choose Art Optimized and then make sure it's on the maximum setting for quality. So that's also yeah, progressive. And then everything looks all set, RGB, I've chosen 300, you might wanna choose 150 and then you can press okay. And now I've just opened it in Finder and you can just see I've organized everything into the same file. So I have previous version of it, I have my Illustrator file, uh, I have some of the sketches that I did, I have everything for this pattern um, and the texture all right here in this folder so that I can go back and, and find it if I need to rework it or just reuse an element. Okay, so then I've opened it up. I've given it one last look. Yes, that is the file that I want to be using. So now I'm here at Spoonflower and it knows it's me logging in. So it says, welcome Aurora. And I'm going to go up to upload a design up here. All right, so you can select a maximum of up to eight designs. And as I said, the recommended size is 150 DPI. And then you just go to choose files. And I am going to choose that camping design that I showed you. You just have to confirm that you own the copyright. And then you just click upload and you can upload your file. So sometimes it takes a few minutes. If obviously if you have all eight, it's going to take even longer. And then here you go. It's going to show you the pattern. It's going to be named whatever the name of your file was. You can change that later. And here you go. If you did upload it in a 300 DPI, you go over here, change DPI and you click on it. And then you just type in 300 and click change. And then it's going to show you the same size. Okay, and then you can go over to view all products and I like to open it in a different tab. And then you just go in and see if it is indeed the size you want it to be. It helps give you an idea of scale. You can look at what it's going to look at on product. Now I probably wouldn't have this particular design on a uh, tablecloth, but it just helps give me an idea of what kind of uh, size it's going to look on on products. And if that looks good, just going to go in. I just start off with putting it in collections by number so that when I go in and proof, I can proof all of my new designs at once. And then I go ahead and I put it in a different collection later once it's all proofed. So the next thing you need to do is go ahead and, and choose a name for your design. It automatically gives it the design name of your file, but I hadn't chosen a name yet. And I'm thinking because this is actually going to be for a design challenge, which is my favorite things. I'm thinking maybe it should be something about things. So I thought gear at first, um, but then I thought that's not very compelling a name. It does uh, camping gear isn't a very good kind of good from a storytelling perspective. I do add in the warm orange and then I'm I'm sitting here trying to think of a better title while I'm also writing in a description. Um, best case scenario, you think of this before, but the good news is you can just always come in and add this later. So I'm just thinking off the cuff, camping inspired pattern with tents, roasted marshmallows, luckily they help you out with spell check. So. Um, you can go and do that. Um, but as I said, I'm still trying to think of a better, a better name. So then as I was thinking of the description, I was thinking, wow, there's fire pits, something warm. So fireside camping. Um, and then in the end, I landed on the title of memories by the campfire, warm orange, because I thought that kind of gave a cozy feeling. And then it said, went back and just hit the spell check on that, added a few extra details in the description. I'm not taking it too seriously at this point because as I mentioned about sales, they're not going to be offered for sale until you've proofed it. So if nobody finds my design before it's been proofed, it's really 
not a big deal because it's not ready to be sold anyway. And sort of the same sort of things with the tags. You know, I'm trying to add in the things I think about. So I'm thinking the campfire, the camping, um, trying to think of what sort of style. And, and for this one, I'm thinking woodsy. Um, this is because, as I said, this was for a design challenge. It isn't necessarily in any kind of signature style, but I took the opportunity to just do something different. Um, I use these design challenges to just stretch my skills and and experiment in ways that I might not otherwise experiment. So I kind of go down to the tag um, helper and it's mentioning, you know, things like what are the main colors? Where would you want to put it? So that's why I'm adding in orange and rust, um, thinking what would it be good for? Where, where could you use it? And I thought, okay, maybe you could use it in quilting because um, it, it does have some multi-direction to it. Um, so as I said, that was just, you know, I can go back and change this later. I do want it to go a public because I am going to put it in a design challenge. And at this point, I'm just going to leave it in the fat quarter so you can kind of get the overall feel for it. And then for additional details, I just want to let people know because this is a vectorized design. So it's going to be able to be available in other sizes. I'll do another episode on how you can resize without having to pay to reproof. Um, and then I also know it can be done in other colorways, although at that point I would need to reproof. So I'm just letting people know that they can message me for, um, for customizations and that I am open to that and that they can reach me either through the pl platform on Spoonflower itself, or they can reach out to me direct messaging uh, at Instagram at Aurora Buick Art with the uh, underscores there. And before I go, I just think of a few more tags because I do know that if I don't think of them now in the past, I've forgotten to add things when I go back later to put it for sale. So while I'm thinking of it, I just add some more and then have saved changes. And then there you go. That is how you get your design from Illustrator onto Spoonflower. Um, we will go through proofing in another episode, but basically you have to proof your pattern before you can have it for sale. But this is just how you get it up on the site. Um, and then when everything's done, just make sure you've saved all your changes. Most of them save automatically, but I like to just press save a few extra times just to make sure everything's good. And there you go. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me. If you got some value out of this content, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And until next time, keep creating.